Hi, I'm Sam Hawley, coming to you from the lands of the Gadigal people. This is ABC News Daily. While isolation rules lift here tomorrow, in China, the government is doggedly pursuing a zero COVID policy. The city is still being locked down with almost no notice. For President Xi Jinping, keeping COVID out has been a platform of his leadership as he prepares to be endorsed for an unprecedented third term, the Communist Party's Congress that begins on the weekend. Today, East Asia correspondent Bill Bertels on how much longer China can stay out of step with the rest of the world. Bill, I want you to paint a picture for me of what is going on in China because the government there is determined to pursue a COVID zero policy, even though the rest of us, we're all sort of moving on. Well, Sam, China officially is pursuing what's called a COVID zero policy that involves stamping out outbreaks at their earliest stage. And so on a daily or weekly basis, you continually see new restrictions or even lockdowns introduced for different parts of the country. So just uh, in recent days, we saw that people are now banned from leaving the far western region of Xinjiang because Xinjiang has reported dozens of cases in recent days. In Hainan, the southern tropical island, people there have been told in the tourist city of Sanya that they must get a PCR test, otherwise their digital health code will go from green to yellow, which is the intermediate stage, and that means there'll be movement restrictions placed on them. Shenzhen recently, we saw a lockdown uh, as COVID cases were detected there. Chengdu recently had one as well. So just in different cities, every week or so, you get updates about restrictions and One of the big differences with China compared to, say, the lockdowns that we had in parts of Australia is this digital health code. It is all linked to this app on your phone. Your movements can be tracked, but it's also linked out to the data for your testing and whether you're up to speed with the requirements for COVID testing. And it really does stop you from going to office buildings or getting on trains or doing those sorts of things. Let's just explain that a bit more, this sort of traffic light system they've got going, this digital health code. Yes. How does that work? So in Beijing, for example, if you want to go out and about, if you want to go to uh, supermarkets or get on the train or basically if you don't want to just stay at home, you have to get a COVID PCR test once every three days. And if you don't, then your app will change from green to yellow, which will show people that you are not up to date on testing. And this is happening in provinces across China. And you can see that it becomes a very highly managed way of life to maintain this constant level of uh, very low COVID in the community. Gosh, every three days sounds time consuming to say the least. And we can see that people are getting frustrated. Some people in some cities in China are protesting against these restrictions, which is pretty rare. I saw a report that even a high-speed train from Shanghai to Beijing was halfway there and it was stopped and everyone yeah. was made to get off. Yeah, well, these, these are the sorts of things now that can happen where a, a, a case is detected through the testing network that that person, their, their movements uh, have been tracked uh, because they're on a high-speed train and therefore um, authorities are very keen to stop that train getting to its destination and instead quarantining people. We've seen this throughout the pandemic in China. People have gone to Shanghai Disneyland only to be locked in Shanghai Disneyland <laughs> because someone supposedly has COVID, and then everybody has to take a PCR test before they're allowed to leave. Um, In Yunnan, the southwestern province, just in recent days, we saw uh, it was a really surreal scene. These armed policemen, they had rifles. They're fully clad in PPE, sort of like a white hazmat suit. They looked like stormtroopers off Star Wars, you know, running around this airport, shutting it down, stopping anybody from leaving. And once again, that's because suddenly somebody supposedly tested positive and that just scuttles people's plans. Go home, go home. 
No tongue in air! People were at the airport waiting to catch flights to somewhere else. So you can see the level of disruption. Probably everybody in major cities in China are going to get caught up in one way or another in this type of incident. So long since the first COVID outbreak in Wuhan, it's hardly surprising that Chinese people are getting frustrated by this. And you mentioned, you know, it can take just a few cases for a lockdown to happen. And we've got to remember, don't we, there's millions and millions and millions of people that live in these cities. So it seems extreme. It can take one case and that's all it takes. Uh, this the, the recent, it wasn't a lockdown, but the recent movement restrictions that were imposed in southern Hainan was based on uh, two cases. One thing that has to be, I think, remembered about China is for a huge number of people in China, it's hard to gauge, maybe the majority. There is tremendous pride in the COVID zero policy. Now, a lot of this probably does have to do with government propaganda, but this idea that China is exceptional, that only China can keep the virus out. Now, they can't actually keep it out completely. There's probably on a daily basis now around 1,000 to 1,000 and a half cases that are detected across the country. It's getting harder and harder to keep it out. But compared to the size of the overall population, you can understand that for a lot of people in China, despite all these frustrations, there is still uh, both a lot of pride in the policy, but also belief in the policy's necessity. So this is where it gets uh, really complicated. You do see a lot of frustration. You do see people getting increasingly caught up in situations where uh, they're getting fed up and wondering how long this is going to last. But I'm also hearing from people I speak to there that yes, there remains a great deal of fear about the virus and particular fear of the outside world, which from a Chinese uh, perspective can look like it's riddled with the virus and only China is safe. It does sound extreme compared to what's happening in other countries, including here in Australia. So, Bill, why is China so out of step with the rest of us? Is it just that they want to save lives? They don't want anyone to have COVID? Is it just for health reasons? Well, it depends who you ask, Sam. (laughs) It it, it is blatantly (laughs) political. It appears to me that this has been a tremendously important political campaign by Xi Jinping, it's really helped to centralise power. It's really helped to monitor people's movements. That's not to say that there aren't legitimate health concerns about letting it rip in China, but certainly politics is playing a big, big role. So there are benefits for President Xi, but there are also, we know, huge downsides to lockdowns. We saw what happened with economies, Western economies, with Australia's economy and elsewhere. It can't be good for China's either. So the narrative on China's COVID zero, it's really interesting to see how this has flipped over the past few years. So about a year into the pandemic, and remembering the whole thing began in China, but a year into the pandemic, a lot of people were sort of looking at China as being the only country that has pulled off this great quick economic recovery They locked everything down briefly. They basically eradicated the virus within China's borders initially. It's how it appeared. And the rest of the world was riddled with COVID and the economic problems. But China domestically had a bounce back. But here we are three years down the track almost. And things haven't turned out so well because with Omicron and its infectiousness, the cost to continually lock cities down and lock factories down temporarily is getting higher and it's causing real disruptions and particularly at ports where uh, the Chinese government has been trying to stop COVID coming in on the surface of imported products and things like that. So you've had tremendous log jams and logistics problems now as a result of the policy simply because with the increasing infectiousness of variants, it becomes harder and harder It's like whack-a-mole for China to try and uh, continually keep the virus out. Mm, So the question is, how much longer can President Xi play this game of whack-a-mole? How much longer will he pursue this policy of COVID zero? 
Well, Sam, there's been some pretty grim reading just in the past few days for people hoping for some sort of change with the Communist Party's official mouthpiece, the People's Daily, publishing three really strongly worded editorials, uh, all saying that the existing COVID policy must continue, uh, saying that only this policy can safeguard people's health and their livelihoods. And it all seems quite oblivious to the economic problems that it's been causing. And you kind of get this idea that maybe these uh, statements are being put out because there could be a bit of disagreement in the party. Uh, They're really trying to uh, set the direction clearly ahead of the meeting. Uh, But either way, uh, they're worded in such a way that it would make it very, very difficult for Xi Jinping to change direction. In fact, one of the editorials ended by saying, fighting against the pandemic is a struggle of material and spirit It is a contest of strength and will. Do you really think, uh, having put those sorts of messages out to the people of China, that the leader is then suddenly going to uh, ease, ease things up and change direction? It looks highly unlikely now. Bill Bertels is the ABC's East Asia correspondent based in Taiwan. President Xi is expected to address the Communist Party Congress on Sunday and will chat with Bill again on Monday about the Chinese leader's battle with the West as he secures his historic third term. This episode was produced by Flint Duxfield, Sydney Peed, Chris Dengate and Sam Dunn, who also did the mix. Our supervising producer is Stephen Smiley. I'm Sam Hawley. ABC News Daily will be back again tomorrow. Thanks for listening. Subscribe to listen to more free podcasts or download the ABC Listen app and stream ad-free.